Ayan, isang magandang, magandang, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Alam ko, medyo na-miss niyo po ang ating EdTech Unit because uh, itong nakaraang linggo ay medyo hindi po tayo nagkasama-sama dahil sa mga um, gawain na kailangan din pong tapusin ang ating EdTech Unit. Pero rest assured po na baka yung iba sabihin, nagsawa na yata o napagod na yata ang EdTech Unit. So, kami po ay narito again. It's a Saturday, a rest day, and sa konsepto na DepEd TV, if it's Saturday, it's professional development session for teachers. And now, we will have our first Saturday session. It is not part of the DepEd TV, but we decided to broadcast it on our, on our session this Saturday. Since its invention over 30 years ago, the, ele the electronic calculator has evolved for a machine that could only perform simple four function operations, which is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, into one that can now also execute highly technical, algebraic, symbolic manipulations instantly and accurately. Each new generation of calculators build on the previous one with heightened speed and a more advanced capabilities. At the same time, the cost of a basic calculator has dropped so low that virtually every household in the Philippines can afford at least one. So today we are very lucky na kasama natin ang isa sa mga very dependable partners ng ating kagawaran ng edukasyon, ang ating Casio Philippines, na sila po ang ating naging partner in delivering this uh, webinar session on hashtag makeshift maximizing calculator software in the new normal settings. God Almighty, we offer you this pertinent occasion. Truly, we rejoice because you have made this event possible through your grace, guidance, and love. Everyone, let us feel the presence of the Lord with this prayer. Dear God, thank you for all the blessing you have bestowed upon us. We are truly grateful for them. Thank you for allowing us today to meet and share our knowledge and time with one another in this webinar. May you extend your divine wisdom to our speakers so that they would be able to impart effectively their God-given knowledge to all of us. May they be blessed as they continue to bring their expertise to the people only them. Please bless the participants as well so that they would be able to bring the vital information from the society. May you bestow your blessings after this webinar so that we may go out and spread what we learn in the spirit of your love and generosity. May we realize that this activity should glorify your name. Amen. Okay, so ayan, talagang napaka lucky natin to have our to have this session right now. So it's something so, it's a rest day to all of us, pero dahil tayo ay mga guru, we need to grow professionally and to grow professionally, we need to attend different uh, seminars like this or webinars. So, at this point, without much ado, I will now introduce to you our resource speaker for this uh, hashtag makeship webinar sponsored by Casio and Educational Technology Unit. Currently, he is the Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics. At, S, at Schools Division Office of Makati, graduated cum laude with a degree of BSc Mathematics at Philippine Normal University in 2001. He finished his master's degree, Master of, uh, master of Science in Mathematics at Ateneo de Manila University in 2015. He is also an author of a book under Bibal Publishing House, Our World of Math, Grade 10. He is, an, he is the recipient of the 2013 MTAP Exemplary Teacher Awardee and a lecturer in the MTAP DepEd NCR Convention. 
He also served as a judge in the sectoral and regional Metro Bank MTAP DepEd Math Challenge and a trainer in various mathematics competitions such as Metro Bank Mathematics Challenge, Philippine Mathematical Olympiad, UP Matiran Matibay. A trainer in the National Training of Trainers on Grade 6 K-12 Program under the Department of Education in 2016 and a trainer in National of Training of Trainers on Grade 10 K-12 Program in the Department of Education in the year 2013. He is also a college mathematics professor. He taught mathematics subject in the foundation program of those students who are taking bachelor of secondary education major in mathematics. Let us all welcome our speaker for this morning, Sir Michael R. Lee. Okay. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Maraming salamat. Thank, uh, thank you, Sir Salvador Mandelsana. And also to all the teams of EdTech Unit. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm going to start now. So I know all of you are excited to solve problems, especially in mathematics. So I'm happy that you are here. Even if it's uh, Saturday, uh, you have your time for me and all the people, uh, lahat ng mga kanumiro, magandang umaga sa inyo, mga kakashumate yan. So, this is, uh, the title of this webinar is Hashtag Makeshift. So, talagang makeshift nga naman. So, sabi nga nung aking hugot dito, Gurong Pilipino handa sa makabagong pagbabago. The World Teachers Day, ito yung tema. So, we are more than ready dapat ngayon kasi we have to make shift from old uh, teaching modality uh, to a new teaching modality. The old one, yung pe paper and pen, yan ang ating online assessment, chok lang pwede na magturo ang isang math teacher. But this time, uh, because of the COVID, so we have to make shift. So from a chalk down to different platforms on how to teach mathematics. So I hope na lahat kayong mga gurong Pilipino ay handa na sa makabagong pagbabago. So 2019, wala pang COVID by that time, by, pero nagkaroon na. So talagang na forecast na ng World Teachers Day team ang mangyayari ngayong 2020. So dapat handa sa makabagong pagbabago. Okay? So what makes you an excellent teacher or a creative 12 Ma-effective K-12 mathematics teacher. Siyempre, dapat marunong tayo sa mga technology. So, if we will go back to the conceptual framework for mathematics education, in-highlight ko dito yung mathematical tools. At nakalagay dyan that we need to know some calculators and computers. And ano nga ba yung mga uh, technology na dapat alam ng isang math teacher, especially yung online teaching na sa ating bansa. So, whether we like it or not, we have to embrace itong pagbabago. Okay? So, ano nga ba ang mga technology that you have to implement in your classroom? So, we have the Potomat, GeoGebra, we have also the different Java applets. So, those are available naman sa Google and you can download it. But specifically today, I will introduce to you the the Casio, the calculator, 9860, ang model. And why is that we need to know or integrate the different technology in the mathematics classroom, especially for today, uh, for this uh, online teaching modality na natin. So the impact, syempre motivation. So once you have the technology, madaling ma-motivate ang mga bata. So they, we can increase their attention. They are, uh, enjoy the learning environment kapag may mga hawak silang calculator and ma-improve rin yung students' uh, learning outcomes ng mga bata kapag may mga gadget na dala, dala si teacher sa classroom. Pero wala nga ngayon, so we will just use the emulator for today and I hope someday you can have this kind of calculator as well. And then exploration. So through the technology, you can explore more concepts, establish more uh, concepts in mathematics, establish some connections. Hindi limited yung na-explore ng bata kasi kung classroom, medyo, tas wala kang technology, 
limited lang yung na-explore at na, na-investigate ng mga bata sa classroom. Unlike if they have the technology, the availability of the technology, they can do a lot. So they can explore and discover. That's why yung mathematical investigation, maganda kung maraming technology yung bata. Okay? And then visualization. So from theoretical, they can solve problems uh, through different solution, detailed solution. But this time, they can visualize. So something, ano ba yung root? Ano ba yung, why, is, why is that we keep on getting the value of x? Ano ba yun? Ano bang essence nun sa, sa graph? So visualization and they can solve a uh, fast and accurate solution, exact, uh, exact picture of the graph. At hindi ito yung dinodrawing lang natin dati sa Manila paper, sa blackboard. But this time, they can have the, a good picture of the graph because of the the feature of our graphing calculator. And then the abstract, it is yes, from abstract becomes more realistic to them. So they can have the, the aha moments. We call it the aha moments, the eureka moments. Ah, ito pala yun. Ah, yun pala yun. That's why we get some values of X, okay? And then <clears throat> this can be a support to our teachers right now. The nagtuturo na online at pag ito ay alam mo, so medyo may edge ka din sa mga other teachers na hindi pa nila alam yung feature ng graphics calculator. So this is an opportunity for our teachers to learn more and give some uh, input to your students once you once you use the the graphics calculator. Okay, so. That, that I still remember last year, last November, ang DepEd ay nagbigay ng calculator sa buong Pilipinas, the Sun besides Mindanao, and we conducted some trainings about this calculator. At ito ay libre naman ibinigay sa buong Pilipinas. Yun nga lang, limited. So what we did, nag-train kami ng mga senior high school teachers, and then sila yung assign na mag-cascade sa kanilang uh, kanya-kanyang region, kanya-kanyang division offices, pero nagkaroon nga ng pandemya, that's why I hope some, some of them siguro ay hindi na nila natuloy yung cascade. So I'm happy that we have this kind of webinar. So this is just uh, just to trigger them again na kailangan na itong gawin at at least may webinar series like this na pwede na nilang gamitin at share sa kanila mga co-teachers. Okay, so we're hitting two birds in one shot here. So I know we have we are all excited to solve problems. So in the advertisement of the Casio and the EdTech unit, nakalagay doon kung ano yung ida download nyo uh, uh, emulator. So ito nga yung this is the I hope na na download nyo na kung hindi pa. So sabay sabay tayo. So ito ay we will activate. So this is the, the interface of the Casio 9860 emulator. So medyo hindi ko na muna ilalagay itong kilag but I will give enough time kung ano yung mga pinipindot. So, so I'll just make this minimize. So pag minimize mo yan, nawawala yung end part. So tatanggalin ko lang yung some toolbar na nagiging nagpapalaki ng view ko. So, dun sa mga hindi pa nakaka-download ito, I hope na you have now the time to download para maka-participate po kayo sa ating webinar for today. So, lalagay ko lang sa gilid. By the way, I'm using OneNote. Uh, ito yung medyo nagustuhan ko sa platform ko when I solve problems. So, alam niyo naman na in mathematics, we cannot deny na we will not show the solution of our students. So, dapat pinapakita pa rin natin yung solution kahit online teaching. Medyo din discourage ko dito, specifically in Makati, na when you teach mathematics, ay binabasa lang yung slides at click lang ng click yung teacher. So, we don't like that. So, what we want in mathematics, so, you have the slide and you have to show the solution. So we cannot go away from our old way of solving mathematics through a detailed solutions on the board, okay? So my first problem, equations inequality. So how I'm going to integrate calculator and, uh, and the, the primitive solution of this problem. So I'll go to run, run menu, but before that, 
itong mga calculator natin, we have a lot of menu here. So you can navigate that by using this uh, this bigger circle, circle here. So we will explore the run menu. At notice, may mga number yan. 1, 2, 3, yan. So pag pinres ko yung 1, uh, 2, pupunta ko sa start. Pag pinres ko yung exit, I'll go back to the main menu. So I'll go to run menu and matrix. Then I'll just erase all. So delete all. Pag delete L, it means delete line. So for me, delete all. And then yes. Okay. So I'm going to solve the first problem, this one. 2x minus 5 equals 9. So sa akin, sa, sa math, tuturo mo yan sa bata ng... Siyempre, what we did is 2x, 9 plus 5, tapos 2x equals 14, then x equals 7. That's it. So same here. So 2x. So, magiging 3, negative 1, minus 3. So, 2x. So, negative 4. So, x is negative 2. But this one, x is 7 and x is negative 2. What's that? So, we always explain to our class that it's a value of x that once you substitute in the equation, it will satisfy. It will, it will be equal to 9 and this 2 will be equal to 3. But we have to put some meanings about this, a good meaning of it by using our calculator. So, with this calculator, we can establish some aha moments. Kasi, in, so using the run menu, I can show this also that x equals 7 by pressing the option and the, go to calc. You means, it means that you have to calculate and then solve n. So, you will have this uh, open parenthesis. So you just type the 2x, 2x, minus 5, and then yung equal symbol natin, nandito lang naman sa dot, so shift. So this is the problem of the emulator, no? So, but don't panic, so you just close it and then open mo lang ulit, activate mo lang. So yun naman ay hindi mabubura yung mga tinipe mo, so nandudun lang siya. Okay, so yun nga lang, it will take time. So, go back again to the process. So, some toolbar, remove. Para makita nyo yung slide ko plus the calculator. So, that's why I have to remove some toolbar. Okay. So, tiyaga lang, no? Okay. So, then, dahan-dahan mo lang siya. The drag. Okay. So, in the run menu... So, solve yung aking equal symbol. As I said, it's located here. So, shift equal. Yan. So, 9. And then, close parenthesis. Yeah. So, the answer may, you may have more solution. May exist. Yes. So, the answer is 7. Okay. And then, you can also this, uh, solve the second problem. So, again, exit. And then option, call, and then solve n. Yan lang pipindutan. Then another line, so look, suppose x plus 3, then equals, pwede mong, uh, no, equals is shift, shift, negative x. I don't know, it's not that. So, negative x. So, medyo negative x minus 1. Okay, then close again. So, that's it. So, exit. So, the answer is negative 2. But how are you going to show this to your class using the graphical approach? So, for me, uh, I'll go to graph menu. So downward, so this is the graph menu, and then I'll just erase some equations. So, alam ko na itong 2x minus 5, I, I will treat this as one function. So, I'll just treat this as one function, and then this is another function. So, this is my y1, 
and this is my y2 okay when is my y1 equal to y2 so that's how i'm going to interpret that so my y1 is 2x minus 5 okay i'll just type it or you plug in 2x minus 5 and then y equals 9 okay so then draw so shift i can make some viewing window standard so that it will be nice view so that is the view of this is actually then you can capture that pwede mo to capture if you want so copy then paste mo dito sa you one note so there so ito yung pwede mong gawin habang nagtuturo ka online Okay, then go back to your calculator to show. So this is the graph. So nakita nyo na paste ko yung screen ko from calculator so that you can annotate and you can write a lot dun sa graph. Kasi in the calculator, you cannot write anything. So as I said, I want that the teacher should write on the board even if it's on the online teaching modality. So this is the way. So gagawin ko, I'll get some... So nawala na naman siya. Okay, this is really a struggle for our emulator. So, gagawin ko dyan, I'll get the intersection. So, the intersection should shift, G, solve. Then, I have there the intersection of the two lines. So, it's 7. So, I'll go back to my one node. So, I know that this is 7. So, this is exactly at 7. So I know that this is exactly at 7. Okay. So this is 7. And then. Then ask yourself, when is this the, the, the graph of Y1? Itong line equal dito sa nag-intersect sa y2. So, at 7. So, x equals 7. That's why ito yung sagot, no? x equals 7 sa primitive solution. So, same thing with our second problem. The second problem, you just graph uh, ano ba yun? So, ito yung hindi ko ano, no? Kasi naka so, talaga yung maliit siya. Para nakikita ko yung problem. And then you aking slides. Kasi sa online, imagine, ano natin, if feel natin right now that you are already a teacher and doing the online teaching. So, ganito mo siya gagawin. No? So, you just drag it, dahan dahan And suppose, marami kang batang viewer. So, i-delete ko yan. Okay, class. So, this is how are you we going to show the the visual or graphical approach? So I will plug in again x plus 3 as my y1. And then my y2 will be negative x minus 1. Okay, masyadong sensitive ang aking. Minus 1. Okay, then graph. So then, if you want to get this, the intersection of that, so shift, and then G solve, and then intersect. Kung saan nakatapat yung intersect, F5, yan yung pipindutin mo. Pag gusto mo kunin ng root, F1. Pag maximum value, F2. These are the sub-functions. So we call it the sub-functions, and then naka-align yan sa different functions sa baba. So F1, F2. But I want intersect, so F5. Yeah, so it will intersect at negative 2, 1. So, ibig sabihin, itong graph na to, itong x plus 3, and negative x minus y equals negative x minus 1, will be equal sa intersection nga naman nila at negative 2. So, that's why here. So, imagine from solving it a primitive, itong solution natin naka-blue, 
the handwriting ko, uh, paano mo ito papakita visual sa so using the graphics calculator. Yung pala ang meaning nun, kung saan sila nag-intersect. Okay? Then, tsaka mo ipasok yung, pag nag-lesson ka na ng systems of equation, ito pala yun, ano? It's just like you're solving systems of equation kasi you can rewrite this. So you can rewrite Lang, I have to so we can rewrite this actually no so pwede ko sabihin na this is uh, y uh, equals x plus 3 and then y equals x plus 1 a negative y negative x Minus 1. So, which is the same as this. Yan. So, tiba pag sinusolve mo tong system of equation na to, uh, ini-equate natin yung parehong y. Kung substitution method gagawin mo, i-grab mo yung una, i-grab mo yung kalawa, then get the intersection of the two. That's how we solve it, the system. Pero, hindi natin alam na yung pala ay you are also solving a uh, linear equation. Pero, ang kinukuha mo lang yung value of x but not the y anymore. Kasi the, the, the value of x here, that's the only variable na hinahanap mo. Unlike here, you have to get the value of x in order, the ordered pair, the solution set of this. Okay, although in our calculator, you can have also such uh, systems of equation. We have here, go to equation, and then meron ka dyan simultaneous or systems of equation, polynomial, and then solver. So, I will use the simultaneous F1. So, dyan, sasabihin niya sa'yo kung ilang unknown ang hinahanap mo. Pwede two unknowns, three unknowns. So, the first problem is uh, two unknowns. So, I'll use F1, two. So, it's like a matrix. So, you just plug in. So, yung A mo dyan, yun yung numerical coefficient ng X. Yung B, yun yung numerical coefficient ng Y. And then, tapos yung C mo dyan, yun yung constant. So, negative 3. Then, ganun din sa kalawa. So, gagawin mo dyan, plug in mo lang. So, 1 plus uh, one, another one, and then negative one. Okay, yung C natin. And then, you'll have that. Then solve mo siya. So, negative two, one. Okay, so ang ating numer uh, solution set there is negative two, ordered pair, negative two, one. So, ibig sabihin, dyan tatama yung ating uh, intersection. Then you can verify that using our a uh, graph menu. So punta ka ulit sa graph menu and then you'll have that. Prove that to your class that these two lines will intersect at negative 2, 1. Okay, then intersect, get the intersection, press, so tama nga naman. So negative 2, 1. Okay, and also, you can have some inequalities dito. Yung mga shaded region, yung mga uh, true or false natin na may testing point. You can also explore that to your class. So, since online na to, wala ka ng chance to, to draw a line on the board and then kukulayan mo yung board ng colored chalk. Wala ka ng chance na gano'n. So, gagawin mo talaga whether you like it or not. You have to learn this wherein kailangan mo ipakita sa bata yung systems of inequalities. Kunyari, na-convert ko to into inequalities. Kunyari, y equals uh, greater than x plus 3. Kunyari. So, I'll select type and then meron ka dito different kinds of functions. So, pwedeng equal. Yeah, pwede mo to explore. Y equals, R equals kapag polar. Polar ang i-graph mo para metric. 
So, I'll choose y equals greater than. So, kunyari, ayan, napansin nyo, nag-change ito. Kapag equal, mag equal to lahat. So, it means that all functions that you will plug in here will be greater than. So, gagawin ko, uh, greater than x plus 3. So, I'll tie, plug in x plus 3. And then, yung partner nitong systems of inequalities ko, uh, less than naman. So, type again, F3, pipili ako ng less than or equal to, kunyari itong F4. Kasi nasa pang-apat siya, F4. And then, ipa-plug in ko dyan ang negative X, negative X minus 1. Okay? And then, mapupunta siya dyan. Tapos, pwede mong lagyan ng design na kapag yung Y1 uh, running at uh, Running lines ba tawag dyan or dotted lines? So, di ba ganun tayo pang nagturo nito? Running lines. Yung isa, solid line. May mga ganun-ganun tayo. So, I'll choose the first one, solid line. Okay? And then, yung second one ko, ayan, kunyari, ganyan na nga. So, yung second one ko, gusto ko ay uh, type ko. Anong type? Nung line, nag ano? Anong classing style? I'll choose yung running lines. So, yan. Mapapansin mo yung magbabago to. Ito solid line. Ito running line. So, ibig sabihin, yan. So, diba nai-enjoy ng bata to kinukulayan ng dalawang kulay. No? Isa blue at sa green. Tapos yung double shaded region, that's the solution set. So, madali na. So, pwede mo itong i-capture ulit sa bata. So, pwede mo yung paglaruan. So, capture the screen. And then, pwede mo i-copy-paste, copy, and then paste mo dito sa iyo board. Yan, ganyan siya, no? So, so ganun mo lang gagawin. So, next is, what about the, the three unknowns? So, the three unknowns, so pwede mo siya, since the graph menu, hindi kaya yung tatlong variable na ganyan, ano, y, x, tas, Hanggang gagawin ko, I'll use the, the solver. Yung, so, I will go to equations. Dito sa menu na equations. And then, x, laging x, no? Simultaneous again, F1. And then, this time, it's three unknowns. So, yan. Ipe-prepare ka niya sa matrices. And then, we're in, you have to plug in all the elements. So, the augmented matrix. 1, then negative 3, negative 3, and then positive 3, then negative 4. Assuming na tinuro mo na sa bata yung solving uh, three unknowns. Ito lang yung pang build sa kanila na, let's say you are you're checking their assignments, at least machi-check mo na ng mabilisan sa iyong online teaching. Hindi ka nakakain ng mahabang oras. So, one way to verify their answers. Then, may mga aha moments. Matutuwa sila na, ay, ang bilis masol because you just enter it to your sophisticated calculator. Okay? So, ayan na naman siya nawawala. Okay? So, I'll just minimize this. Sana yan lang talaga. So, bit, tanggalin lahat. Okay. So, dahan-dahan mo lang siya i-drag. Okay. So, go back tayo, no? So, doon tayo sa equation. So, equation. So, simultaneous, F1. Naka-enter naman na yung value doon sa so, three unknowns. So, 2, 3, negative 1. So, nandito na ako. Sa so, letter C, negative 1. And then, 15. Tapos, sa so, third naman ay 4. The negative 3. 
So, ito ay maganda sa mga junior high school. So, negative 1 again. And then, 19. Then, one click lang, may solution ka na. May, may sagot na. So, the 5. So, the solution set 5, 1, negative 2. So, you can write it here. So, pwede ka na magsulat ng 5, 1, negative 2. So, solution set here, 5, 1, and negative 2. Okay? So, pwede mo check ka sa loob ng iyong platform na one node. Okay? So, that is equations. Next is, what about this one? Uh, quadratic equation, ano? Solving equation but involving uh, quadratic function. So, in this case, so tinuro ko kanina na you just treat it y1, y2. Actually, I have here a solution of this. Itong una. So, ito siya. So, ito. So, this is the... the the solution, no, yan. Ganyan mo siya isusolve, no, ng manual. So, make some, ano, addition property of equality, then lipat-lipat, then solve the quadratic. So, x equals 3 halves, x equals negative 2. So, ganyan siya ka, ka tedious, no? But if you want to solve it, ang maganda lang dito sa calculator, yung kaya mo ituro ng 2 hours, maituturo mo na lang siya ng 1 hour because of the aid of the graphics calculator. Okay? Yun yung kagandahan no, uh, with technology. Unlike kapag wala, talagang kakain siya na or baka two days mo pa ito ma maituturo ng uh, full. No? So, pupunta ko ng graph, then I'll use my concept a while ago na I'll treat this as my y1, my first function, and then my second function ito. To show to my class, ano ba talaga yung ba, how to get, what's that value of x? Na ma-realize nila yung value of x, yung pala yung intersection ng y1 at saka y2. So using our calculator. Kasi sa ating old uh, teaching modality, ganun lang, no? we keep on solving values of x. and then Pero gusto mo maging visualize, pa-visualize nila yung solution yan. So, one way to do that, using our calculator. So, I'll delete this. Ito yung kanina kong sinolve. So, again, plug in mo uli yung mga y1. So, negative x squared. Uh, so, naka-inequality pa pala ako. So, exit ako. So, I'll choose again. Oh, I don't know. Ganito talaga siya, no? Pichaga. This is a 90-day trial, kaya siguro libre kasi siya. So, beggars cannot be choosy, sabi nga nila. Okay. Yan. Okay, so nasa na ba tayo? Igagrab ko na yan. So negative x squared. Hindi ko pa pala siya na change Sa type, gagawin ko siyang equal symbol yan. So negative x squared. And then, arrow right lang para masulat mo yung kabisang term. Minus x plus 2. Okay? Yan yung y1 ko. Yung y2 ko, yun yung x squared minus 4. x squared minus 4. Titignan natin saan sila nag-intersect. Kanina, pinakita ko yung maya. So, kanina, pinakita ko yung manual solution. Nakita nyo na yun nga. No? Nag-come up ka into one quadratic equation. But in this case, pwede mo itong palakihan, ano? Shift, zoom, uh, in. Zoom in, tapos exit. Medyo lalaki siyang ganyan. View. And then, gusto ko makita yung y1 mag intersect sa y2. Saang value of x sila nag-intersect? So, shift, 
then G-SOLD, lalabas yung ISCT, then nakatapat siya sa F5, suppress so F5. So, negative 2, tapos, tsaka 1.5, no? Kasi I'm up to the value of X. So, ulitin ko, negative 2, so, and 1.5. So, I'll write it here. X is negative 2, tsaka uh, 1, uh, 3 halves, so 1.5, which is the same here sa iyong solution sa manual, no? Yan. So, this one. Yan. At least, napakita natin, no? So, they will appreciate this from long method going to technology na mabilis mo siyang masusod. Pero, as I said, maganda pa rin ipakita, lagi pa ipakita ang old ways, itong primitive, bago ka mag-technology. It's not good to teach mathematics sa technology agad bago yung uh, yung solution talaga, the, the, the primitive solution, as I said. So next is this one. So let's go here. Ito, uh, this is x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. So if I'm going to treat this, ito, y1 again, this is y2. My y1, it's a polynomial function. And then my y2 equals 0, which is actually the x-axis. No? Ang y2 equals x-axis. Kaya nga, pag may mga solution tayong ganito, ay mga problem na x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Actually, di ba kinukuha mo yung root? Kasi alam mo na yung quadratic tatama dito sa y equals 0. So, yan yun, yun yung y2. Ito naman yung y1 mo. So, kinukuha mo yun, no? dun yung intersection. Just like here, in this problem, I'll use that concept na ito, kailan itong y1 tatama sa x-axis or simply the root. Okay? Kaya pag sinosolve mo yan sa iyong calculator, igagrap mo lang siya Okay. Cancel ko lang ah. Medyo naglulok ko na talaga siya. Tsaga lang natin. So, minimize again. May time na itong emulator, hindi siya nagaganon. So, depende sa, ewan ko, kung may oras ba siya na ganun siya. Okay. So, ang gagawin ko dito, I'll graph this, this polynomial equation. So, x cubed, x cubed, minus 4x squared. So, go back to exit. Asha. So x cubed minus 4x squared. Four x squared plus x. plus x plus 6. So, igagrab ko ulit siya, pero ito ay, i-delete ko yung second, kasi dalawa magagrab pag ganon. So, yan, no? 
So, ibig sabihin, when is the y1 yung graph tatama sa x-axis? That's the meaning. So, ang ibig sabihin, yung intersection nila. So, ano kaya yun? So, shift, g solve, shift, g solve, to the intersection. So, Bitin ko, shift, G, solve, intersection. Pero ang intersection, yun yun may dalawang graph. So in this case, hindi pala ganun, ano? Shift, actually, G, solve, it's the root. Kasi the root, we define the root, it's the value of X or the X intercept. So negative 1, so 2, tsaka 0. This is one way na rin is to solve. Let's say the problem is factor the x cubed by this expression. And then, syempre in factoring, you can express this as so the value are x2, 3, tsaka 3. Ano? x is 2, uh, neg negative 1, 2, and 3. So, pwede mong sabihin na Ang sagot pala dito ay negative 1, 2, 3. Tapos pwede mo sabihin na ang factor niyan ay x plus 1, x minus 2, and x minus 3. So madali mo siya mapafactor. Okay. Next is what about the... Ito, ito no, rational express, uh, rational equation. I'll just solve it. If you will solve this manually, you can have this. Kunyari, ito. You can have it graph both sides. Pwede mong i-graph yan both sides. So, delete. I-graph ko muna yung x minus 3. Okay. And then, Grab ko yung rational function na 6 sa isa pang ano, function as a function again. So 6, tapos sa baba ay x plus 2. x plus 2. Tapos, I'm after the intersection. Okay? The intersection of the two functions. So shift, g solve. So, the solution will be negative 3 at saka positive 4. Negative 3 and positive 4. Yan yung sagot dito sa so, uh, problem na to. Pero, kunyari, uh, medyo ginawa ko siyang inequality. Kunyari, uh, less than or equal to. Ginawa ko ito, ito, to, yan. Ginawa ko siyang x minus 3 less than or equal to 6 over x plus 2. Diba pag sinol mo yan, ililipat mo tong right side sa kaliwa. And then, ganito solution. Napakahaba. Okay? Lipat mo, solve mo yung rational pang, uh, expression hanggang sa kunin mo yung mga critical point. So, I'll just change to green. Kukunin mo mga critical point yan. And then, ilalagay mo sa sign table. Arrange it the way we arrange, in, we arrange it in the number line. And then, yeah, magsa sign table ka. So, this is your epoch. This is x uh, plus 2 actually. Nabura lang siya. And then, epoch x. And then, ganyan siya, no? Lahat, since ito ay negative, less than, kukunin mo yung may mga less than. Then, ibabasahin mo siya ni interval notation, negative infinity to negative 3 close, union to negative 2 close to positive 4. Close din siya kasi of the symbol. Pero sa graph, pag titignan mo ang graph, pag ininterpret ko yung graph, so igagraph ko siya, when is this function, to Kailan itong function na to ilalim ng function na to? So, in short, kailan itong line nasa ilalim ng function nung nasa kanan? Kasi kapag less than or equal to, 
below. Where is this line below this graph? When is the linear function below the rational function? Kapag less than or equal. So, pag pinakita mo yan sa graph, nasan ba yan dyan? So, pero gusto kong itong rational function, ipakita ko yung vertical asymptote niya. Oh. Wait lang. Okay. Pakita ko lang na yung ito, this one, ang vertical asymptote nito ay x equals negative 2. So, para makita nyo mabuti, so I'll just exit here. Then, igagrab ko pa, magta-type ako dito ng isang function, pero mag-start ako sa x equals negative 2. Mm-hmm. Anong nangyayari? Open ko uli yung aking calculator. So, itatype ko na lang yung aking vertical asymptote. Gusto ko kasi makita yung demarcation line ng linear function sa so x equals negative 2. Tapos, gagawin ko siya na uh, sorry. Okay, the style ko dyan gusto ko ng running lines. So, yan. F3. So, yan. Yung... Tapos, gusto ko uh, shift G solve, no? Shift G solve. Intersection. So, negative 3 at saka positive 4. Negative 3 to positive 4. Pero, kapag ginrap mo yan, so, I'll just capture the screen. Capture, then copy, paste. Copy, then I'll go to my OneNote. So, it's here. What is happening here? So, yan. So, mapapansin nyo, guys, na sa negative 3, tapos, sitlo lang. So, negative 3 here. Tapos, dito ay 4. Tapos, ito yung line na x equals 2. No? Ah, kanina, in-interpret ko to kailan itong linear function ilalim. So, ng graph ng uh, rational function. Diba ito, umilalim siya dyan. Tapos, ilalim din siya dito. Dyan. Yan. Sa nag-start yan. So, pwede ko sabihin na nag umilalim siya sa negative 3. As a negative infinity hanggang negative 3, close. Union mula sa 2, hang, uh, open sa 2, open sa 2, to, positive, uh, to 4. Yan. 
Diyan siya. Kaya ang solution ko manually here, yan. So, this one. So, open pala siya sa 2. So, this should be open at 2. Sorry. This should be open at 2. Because of this. It's undefined at negative 2. So, x cannot be negative 2. A positive. Oh, negative 2. Sorry. So, at negative 2 pala to. So, this should be negative 2. Okay? And then, absolute value. Absolute value. The meaning of this. Uh, when is the graph? Ito kasi, if we solve this manually, ganito siya. Okay? Pag sinolve mo yan, ganyan, ano? So, this one. Pero, pag ginrap mo yan, pag ginrap, So, dalawa na naglolo ko. Yung one note, tsaka yung aking So, ito ang ibig sabihin kasi nito, pag ginrap, when is the graph of this function tatama sa 3? So, ang bago lang ay sa skill na to, yung how are you going to graph absolute value. So, nilagay ko doon, ano nga ba yun nasa one note ko? X plus 2, tsaka 3, no? So, lagay ko dito, so, buburahin ko na ito lahat. F1. So, I'll delete all stored functions here. And then, gagawin ko yung type uh, equals. Kasi it's a function. So, gagawin natin. X plus 2. Absolute value of X plus 2 equals 3. So, option. Ganito yung pagta-type ng absolute value. Option, press option. Go to numeric. And then abs. Yung abs dyan ay absolute value. Yung int, yan yung greatest integer. So I'll choose x plus... Kalimutan ko. x plus 2. x plus 2. And then 3. Then draw. So, mapapansin na tatama siya sa dalawa, no? So, shift, then intersection, so negative 5, at saka 1. Yung pala yung dahilan kung bakit ang absolute value equation, kapag sinosol, laging dalawa yung sagot. Most of the time, minsan isa nga lang. So, pero depende sa scenario ng graph. So, this, in this case, negative 5, at saka 1. Kaya pag sinod mo yan manually here sa ating pinakita ko yan eh. Solution niya, it's here. So yan. So 1 negative 5. Okay? Tapos yung ikalawa naman, what about this? Ito. Pag ito sinod mo manually, ang sagot Oh, empty. No? Pero paano mo to explain sa bata bakit empty? Kasi nga naman, absolute value, wala namang ba absolute value na mag-negative. Okay? Pero mas lalo mo itong mapapakita sa bata kung kung ano, no? I-graph mo siya. So, pag ginrap mo, so ngayon pa siya nag-cleaning. Wait lang natin, ha. Oh. 
So, tuloy ko lang habang nag-cleaning siya dyan. Ayan, so medyo ganyan talaga, sir. Lee, kapag medyo live tayo, may mga automatic updating. So, sige, Ayan. while waiting siguro. Uh, Kaming announcements lang po tayo. Uh, a while ago, we were able to post the link for our attendance and nag-close po siya ng 11 a.m. po. And the attendance will be the basis for our live raffle later on po. Meron po tayong raffle na mga casual merchandise mula po, sa, mula po kay Sir Joel Serrano, our representative from Casio Educational Unit. Yan po. We will be having our live raffle later on. Mga casual merchandise, so lahat po na, lahat po na nakapag-attendance. Before 11 a.m. or at exactly 11 a.m., qualified po sila for our raffle later po. So para naman medyo makita rin natin yung mga, uh, mga calculators ni Casio. So, ayan po. Okay, then. Medyo ano tayo, no? Struggle. <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. Ganyan talaga mag-live. <laughs> Ayan, okay na yata, sir. Okay na. Okay, sige. Okay. Ito kasi pag ginrap po ito, bakit kanina empty ang sagot dito, no? Uh, pag ginrap po kasi siya, mapapansin natin na pakita sa bata bakit empty, hindi lang yung solution na negative one, kaya wala siyang, ang absolute value laging positive, no? Mas maa-appreciate ng bata ito kung igagrap mo siya yung x plus 7, absolute value of x plus 7 plus 5 equals 4. So, igagrap natin siya sa graphing calculator. So, option, numeric, abs, x plus 7, tapos may plus 5 tayo, may vertical shift, and then, ano nga uli yun? 4, So, sa 4. Yan. Pag dinro mo kasi to, you will see na, tika lang ha, draw, and then shift ko siya, viewing window standard, para maganda yung view. Yan. Walang chance na mag-meet yung dalawang graph. No? Yung linear function, at saka to, walang chance mag-meet. That's why, empty ang sagot. Okay? Yan, mas ma-appreciate ng bata yan visually na there is no chance to, since in this kind of problem, what we want is to get the intersection of the two. But it so happened in the graph, wala talagang intersection. So, empty. Okay? So, that's one way to establish the concept of this. What about this? This one, this is a good example, a compound inequalities na nasa loob yung uh, nasa loob yung ating uh, absolute value. Pag sinold mo to manually, pinakita ko dito, it's here. Ang haba ng solution. You have to show this to your class. So do not neglect this solution to your class. So dapat makita yung uh, pag greater, yun yung or, tapos pag less than, yun yung end, yun yung mga theorem sa absolute value inequalities mapakita mo tong intersection. So, the answer here is negative 3, 1. Minsan kasi ini-skip ni teacher to eh. So, ngayon, pag ganyan, you have to show that mas ma-appreciate ang solution mo nito kapag in-drop mo. Tignan natin. The solution is here. So, I'll just copy the solution. Pwede mo yan i-transfer kasi eh. So, the solution here So, yan ang solution. Then, pakita ko yung calculator. So, gusto ko makita na sa gilid siya. Okay. So, i-grab ko uli yan. So we have y, we have three functions involved here. Y1, ito. Yan. Uh, y1 here. Tapos ito ay uh, Y2. 
y3. Tatlo yung ipag-plug in kong function. Titignan ko siya kung saan sila tatama sa isa't isa. Para itong squeeze theorem sa calculus na mapapagit na ang dapat yung isa ng dalawang function, whatever the limits of the extreme functions will be the limit of the middle function. Pero hindi ito limit, so, pero ganun lang yung konsepto niya pag ginrap mo siya. So, y equals 3, first function, and then absolute value. So, option, go to numeric, then absolute value, 4 minus x. And then, yung isa naman, 7. Tapos pwede natin palitan yung graph ng absolute value. Yung style ko, gusto ko para ma-identify ko kagad na absolute value siya. Although halata naman talaga kasi letter V yan. Yan. So, so in this case, pwede ko siyang palakihan pa, no? So, shift, zoom in. Very friendly naman itong calcue eh. So, madali siya. Ah, so, hindi maganda yung gano'n. Ano? Zoom. Yan. Sige, that's the best view. If you interpret this, when is the Y1 and Y3? Ah, when is the Y2 pala? This one. Nasa gitna ng Y3 at saka y, Y1 and Y3. Brother. So, kailan itong absolute value mapapagitnaan ng y3, uh, y1, and y2. That's the meaning. So, ibig sabihin, or simply, kailan itong y2 masasandwich, may squeeze or sandwich ni y1 at ni y3. So, yan yung ating titignan si graph. So, iyan ay nasandwich dito sa, so, ikakopy ko siya, Para I can annotate pa sa bata. So, pwede ko siyang dalhin dito. Kailan siya nasa sandwich? Magpakikita nyo guys na na sandwich siya. Ito, no? Yung portion na yan at saka yan. Diyan makikita ang solution set. So, pag ginamit mo yung intercept feature no calcul, makikita negative 3 dyan, tapos 1 here, tapos 7, tapos 11. So, from negative 3 nga naman to 1, sandwich siya, tapos 7 to 11, naka-sandwich siya. So, that's how you visualize this problem. Uh, yun yung gusto ko dito sa visual, uh, graphical approach. No? Mas na-appreciate ko na ay, yung pala ang meaning nito, no? Kesa yung isosolve ko to ng ganito. Pag sinol ko ng ganito sa unang araw, dapat ipakita ko ito sa bata sa ikalawang araw para ma-appreciate nila. Ito, this problem. Ito ay dalawang absolute value. If I will recall a theorem in absolute value, so let me recall, ha, that the absolute value of x is equivalent to x squared. So, which means that this one can be renamed, can be renamed as square root of the absolute value of x plus 3 squared, and also absolute value of, square root of the absolute value of x minus 1 squared. Okay? Yan ang ibig sabihin nito, no? When is the graph of this intersect the graph of the other one? Pero, algebraically, we solve it in this manner, x squared, uh, 6x plus 9 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then cancel, and then you will realize that ang sagot ay 1 minus 9, negative 8, x is negative 1. Because I'm using this theorem. Paano kung hindi ko alam? Okay? Pero that's the best way no, to solve this problem. Now, uh, to show that in the graph, x plus 3 and x minus 1, ano? So, ag ganun ulit ang konsepto. Tatama, intersection. So, I'll just delete this. Okay. 
Yeah. So absolute value, option, then no numeric, x plus 3. x plus 3, tapos yung isa naman ay x minus 1. Option, g sold. No. Numeric, then abs, x minus 1. the new intersection nila. So, tumama sila sa isa't isa, sa isang value lang, sa so, shift, G solve, then intersection, at negative 1. So, yun yung sagot, no? So, the answer should be X equals negative 1 dun sa ating Okay, yun na naman siya. Okay? So, that's about equations and inequalities. Ito naman ay break-even analysis. Medyo kasi I'm using the OneNote online. So, yun lang ang pangit sa online na OneNote. Medyo struggle talaga. Okay, the break-even analysis. In this break-even analysis, we will help the manufacturer. So uh, let me read. A manufacturer of a popular automatic camera uh, who sell the camera to retail outlets throughout the Philippines using the statistical method. The marketing research come up with this kind of two functions. So nakakam up sila ng dalawang function. Ito siya, no? Yan, dalawang yan. Isang uh, R, of, R of X and the C of X. The R of X, yan yung revenue function. Yung C of X, uh, let us define it as the cost function. Revenue, yun yung kinita. Cost function, yun yung gastos, yung puhunan mo. And then yung profit, yun yung tinubo. No? So tutulungan natin itong manufacturer. The beginner idea, kung ilan dapat ang ipuproduce niyang camera para hindi siya makaranas ng, uh, makaranas siya ng profit, uh, break even, at loss. So, tutulungan natin siya paano niya yun gagawin. So, alam natin na ang profit, mangyayari lang ito kapag uh, sa financial, sa business mat, ito ay uh, mangyayari yan kapag ang revenue mo ay mataas sa cost. Okay? Ito namang break even, mangyayari ito kapag ang revenue mo ay equal lang sa cost. So, para ka lang naglaro sa iyong business. Kunyari, sa malamig, o palamig, or fishbowl. So, yung kinita mo, equal lang naman pala dun sa puhunan mo. So, break even. Kapag loss, kapag yung kinita mo ay ang baba kesa dun sa puhunan mo. So, we have there three scenarios. So, this should be greater. <clears throat> so, okay, excuse. So, sinol ko yung una. So it's here. Yeah. The revenue. So this is profit. So profit ko yan. Yan ang solution. So revenue greater than cost. Yan ang solution. And then this, since this is less than, so dito siya tumama. So negative 2, a uh, positive 2 to 7. So makakaranas ng profit kita ang manufacturer kapag nakapag-produce siya ng anong units nito, 27, it's in 1,000 units. So, yan, 1,000. 2,000 units uh, beyond 2,000 but less than 7,000. So, yun yung suggestion natin sa manufacturer. Dapat mag-produce siya ng camera na beyond 2,000 but below 7,000 but not equal to 2,000 and 7,000 kasi naka-open interval tayo dito. Naka-open interval. But how are you going to show that again in your calculator? So, gagawin ko, igagrab ko yung dalawang function na yan. So, I'll grab. So, I hope na hindi tayo magluko dito. 
14 minus x para ma-appreciate ng bata. Kasi kanina nakikita nyo naman kung paano ko siya sinoob ng manual. And then this time, to establish a ha moments and eureka to your students, siguro they, they deserve no? makita yung visual effects niya. Bakit yun nga ba ang naging sagot? Minus x squared. Okay. So, yan. Tapos, pwede mong ipakita ang kanilang intersection to establish na talagang 2, 7. So, at 2, yung una, and then 7. Okay? And then, exit, pwede mong i-graph, then capture. Gusto ko i-capture to para masulatan ko yung aking screen. Then, magbibigay ako ng mga input kasi as an online teacher so lalagyan ko ala, alam ko guys na ito ay tumama sa sa 2 it's here sa 2 at saka 7 so yan no yan dalawang yan then if you interpret this first case I'll use green color itong first case when is the revenue this is the revenue eh the quadratic function. This is the parabola above the line, the linear function. Yan yung profit. So, ibig sabihin, itong portion na to, yung green, that's the profit. Profit portion. When is that? It will only happen at 2 to 7. Na profit siya dun sa green color. So, at 2 to 7, profit. And then, yung letter B, kailan equal? Siyempre, pag equal, yun naman yung intersection. So, at 2 at 7. So, so yung letter B, ang sagot dyan, at 2,000 at saka at 7,000, break even ka. So, ang company, pag nag-produce ng 2,000 at 7,000, break even. Wala lang. Para ka lang naglaro, no? So, that point, we call it in economics as uh, break even points. Break even points. Dalawa yan, no? Tapos, kailan naman loss? So, it's a loss. Kailan loss? This portion will be loss part. Yan, itong portion na to. Kasi sa loss, kailan yung graph ng parabola ilalim ng linear function or ng cos? E tiba, yung portion na yan, eh, ito. So, that part. So, ibig sabihin, loss siya sa ilalim. So, ano yon? Pag nag-produce ang company ng negative 2, a positive 2, to negative infinity, wala namang chance na magbigay ng ano, no? So, union sa 7 to positive infinity. Pag ito pinroduce ng company below 2,000 at more than 7,000, magsasuffer ang company, maglolo siya. Actually, this is an example of a quadratic inequalities. No? Na hindi na mamalaya ng bata na nasusolve na pala sila ng quadratic inequalities. Kasi, pag sinold mo to manually, eto siya, no? Which is, it boils down to quadratic inequalities. Yan. This is the way we solve the quadratic inequalities. Okay? Eto kasi, if I will interpret this, when is my parabola that opens upward, Sorry. When is my parabola that opens upward below the x-axis? Kasi yan yung y equals 0. Diba yan daw ay sa 2 at 7? At yan ay ito. Yan, yung portion na yan. Yan yung parabola na umilalim sa x-axis. Sa, sa so, which is the y equals 0. And if you read that, 2 to 7. Which is the uh, quadratic inequalities. Binigyan ko lang siya ng twist. Apply it in business or economics, no? How are you going to help this uh, manufacturer of a camera na magkuklose, maybe because of the pandemic? Okay, what about this? The simple versus the compound. So, I want to show to your class which is better, simple interest or compound interest. Okay, Pakita ko sa inyo on how I'm going to, so this is the scenario. You have 1,000 and then you will deposit it in a certain bank that pays 
and then how much money it will be after four years in a simple interest versus the compound interest. Pero gusto ko mapakita sa class gaano kaganda ang compound versus the simple interest. Okay? And then later, we might derive some formula here. So, sige. Sa, sa simple interest, pwede ito siya sa simple interest. Pakita ko na lang para mabilis, no? Yung solution ko, it's here. Nabura siya. So, here. Sa simple interest, at time equal zero, ito siya, 1,000. So, at one year, 1,000, tapos imumultiply mo siya ng 1% interest rate. So, yan. Tapos, so, at time two, ito na naman, ito, kukopihin mo lang yan dyan, tapos 1% nung principal, nung P. Fix lagi yung inaad mo. Yan, yan lagi yung inaad mo, PR. P times R. PR. PR. Pero ang nagbabago, yung to. Okay? So, until such time, magmumove ako ng T at T na lang, generalizing it. So, the accumulated value will be ito lang ha. The accumulated value could be like this. No? this can, it can be expressed as this. So, kasi uh, at 3, at third year, ito na yung pera niya. At T years, ito na, 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.01 T. So, ginawa ko lang dito, common monomial factor, sa simple interest. So, which means that the accumulated value is equal to 1,000 or it can be to generalize. So, P, tapos 1 plus, this is the rate, R, T. Yan siya. Pero, that's accumulated value for the simple interest. So, simple interest. Okay, yan. Tapos, yan yung... Uh, future value or the accumulated value. So, lagay ko na lang dito. Kasi you might encounter future value. or Pero the formula, bakit ganun ang simple interest? Ang alam ko, ano eh. Sinasabi mo lagi yan sa bata, PRT yan, PRT. Ah, oo, oh, oh, madali lang yan, PRT. Pero you have to show to your class how come na nagiging ganun, ano? So, the interest now is equal to this, 1 plus RT, accumulated value minus the principal actually. So, the interest is actually accumulated value minus the P. And then, if you distribute P plus PRT minus P, makakancel kasi yan eh. That's why the interest, yun yung tubo mismo, PRT. At least na-establish mo to sa bata. No? Na hindi na lang bigla-bigla lumalabas sa pisara, or maybe, bigla na lalabas dito sa platform mo sa OneNote. So, at least yan yung explanation ko. So, I want you to take note of my, this one. No? Gusto ko ma, ito, ilagay nyo to sa inyong mind, then later I'll use that. 1,000 plus 1 plus 0 0.01, 1, 0 0.01 T. While the compound interest is another story. Okay. At time equal zero, okay, one year, second year, ito common na to. Sa lahat naman tayo, eh, dito ay mga teachers, marirealize yun na kapag ang, uh, at four, third year, so kapag two, ito siya, no? Pag ginamit ko ika three, three years, so dapat ito ay three. So, Kasi ang problem kanina ay 4 years, sorry. So, ito dapat ay 3 kung ikatird, no? So, at T years, maglalagay ka lang ng T dito. So, take note of this. Yan. 
And then I'll use calculator now. Gusto ko makita yung intersection ng dalawang function. So I have here two functions involved. Sa compound, sa compound interest, I have accumulated value, pinag-uusapan ko dito, 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.01 raised to T. And then the simple interest, gusto ko mapakita na accumulated value is 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.01 T. T. May T yan sa loob. Okay? So it's a function. Okay? But if you equate that, I'll get the intersection 1 plus 0 0.01 T equals 1,000. Kasi gusto ko makita intersection nitong dalawa. Then later I'll show it to uh, graphics calculator. So mapapansin, magka-cancel ito. So it will remain as this. So 1 plus 0 0.01 T sa compound Ano? Sa compound, it's... Wait, wait, wait. Sa compound, hindi pala yan linear function. So, 0 0.01 raised to T ang na E1. Tapos dito naman sa simple interest, 1 plus 0 0.01 T. Igagrab ko itong dalawa. Titignan ko kung anong intersection. Okay? Again, this is compound. So, this is simple interest. Okay? I'll grab, pero nawala yung aking graphics. Calculator. Gusto ko lang ma-establish sa inyo yung difference ng dalawa para ma-appreciate ng bata, kailan ako maganda mag mag-invest? Sa simple or sa compound? Okay? Then, ma-realize, ma-establish yung konsepto ng dalawa. Okay? Kasi some of your students might think na mas maganda sa simple interest. So, igagrab ko muna yung zero point Ah, no, no. 1 plus yung simple interest, 0 0.01. Uh, instead of I'm using T, I'll use X. And then the other one, uh, 1, ito na derived na natin kanina, 1 plus 0 0.01 raised to T. Uh, but instead of using T, I'll use X. So, these are the two functions. Pag hirap mo yan, draw, hindi maganda ang itsura, no? So, we have to adjust the viewing window. Uh, I'll use, I have here a note kung ano maganda, negative 200. I'll, negative 200 na minimum values of X uh, up to 200. Na maximum values of X. And then, so why? So viewing window ulit ako. So why naman? I'll use uh, negative 2. Negative 2 to 5. To 5. Yan. Para yan yung best view. And then exit, draw. Yan, yun yung gusto ko makita natin sa bata. So, yung mapapansin natin, so, ika-capture ko siya. So, ika lang. I want to get the, the intersection. So, 0, 1, tumama. So, the first intersection is 0, 1. Tandaan natin, ano? tumama sa 0, 1. But, hindi lang kita-kita sa, sa graph. Mas, meron pa palang isa yan, no? 1 plus a 1 and a 1 and 1.01. Okay? So, dalawa yung point of intersection. 0, 1, tsaka 1, 1.01. So, I'll capture the graph. Then, i-label ko na lang later. 
capture then sa para makapagsulat ako as an online teacher. So, igagawin ko dito. Yan. Papakita ko na sa graph, tumama dito sa 1 ito. 1. Tapos dito banda ay another pa yan dyan. Tapos 0 to. 0, 1. Tapos dito ay 1. Tapos tumama sa 1.01. So, ibig sabihin, meron pa siya dyan. May point pa pala siya dyan na 1, 1.01. Okay? Kama yan. Tapos ito naman, 0, 1. Bakit ko ito pinapakita? Kasi I want to emphasize to your class na this is the, the simple interest, eh? the graph of the simple interest. Okay? Then, dito naman, this is the graph of the compound interest. Then, nababansin ninyo na ang compound interest, paakyat, no? ang, ang simple interest, lagi siyang mababa. Pero, to give you a better view of this, I'll just draw another graph here. So, I'll just graph. This is the accumulated value or E of T. And this is the time. At 0, 1, 2. Ito yung 1, ano? This is the y-intercept. <coughs> Excuse. So, tuma. Yan siya, no? Yan yung simple interest. And then yung compound interest, something like this. Yan. This is the compound interest. Makikita ninyo na at 0, 1, dito tumama, at 1, 1.01, yung after one year lang, no? within one year, ang simple interest okay. Kasi um, ibabaw siya ng compound. Eh. So the performance of the simple interest is okay in a shorter period of time only. Lagyan ko ng this one. 0 to 1, no? okay siya, ibabaw. Pero after 1 year, maybe at 2, at 3, ang compound interest, maganda na ang performance kaysa sa simple interest. Kaya, sa ganito, ma-establish mo sa bata, ay, mas maganda mag-invest ng pera. If a shorter period of time, I go for simple interest. But if I'm going to invest money in a longer period of time, I go for compound interest. Why? Because based on the graph, so kunyari, analyst sila, no, or actuarial, uh, mati, uh, actuarial mat ng tinapos, so you can have this kind of uh, uh, visual na, oo nga, no, ang compound interest, it will only take over the, the graph of the simple interest after one year or beyond one year. Okay? Then the graph of the simple interest is only good between zero to one because the, the graph of the the simple interest, ibabaw nga naman siya nung exponential function because the compound interest here, it's the, the graph is exponential. So exponential growth. Unlike the, the simple interest, it's linear. Pero kitang-kita -kita dito sa graph na ang performance ng simple interest ay maganda lang between 0 to 1. But beyond that, it will go up yung exponential, which is the compound interest. Okay? So yun yung gusto ko. But if I'm going to solve the problem here, yun yung na-appreciate ko dito sa graphics calculator na talagang makakapag-solve siya ng gano'n, ano? And then, pwede mo yan establish na, guys, it's better to invest money in a simple interest if you're just invest it in a short period of time. So here, Ito, let's say I'm going to solve this using the, the calculator. So, suppose kunyari yung reality na. I'll add here yung principal. Yung totoong function kanina na nagawa ko. So, 1,000. Okay. Yung isa rin. Yung ating simple interest. Yung 1,000 rin. So, lalagyan ko na ng parenthesis to. 
Kasi kanina na-cancel to eh because I equated the, the two function. But this time, yung reality, because I want to use a, a certain menu here in the calculator wherein we will see the progress of the money. Okay, in a simple interest, kunyari, notice dito pala, no, may pareho na black yan ito. Ibig sabihin, you are selecting the two functions. Igagrap mo yung dalawa. Pero in this case, I will unselect the second, the Y2, my focus is only the Y1, the first function. So, gagawin ko, style, uh, igagrab ko muna yung, I'll go to menu, then go to table. Yan. So, sa table. Dito, uh, I'll do the set. I'll set this to 1 to 10. Big sabihin sa, sa Excel, para kasi nagkaroon ng Excel, ano, 10 rows ang mangyayari pag 1 to 10 ang sinet ko. Big sabihin nun. So, pag nag-table ako, so kunyari at 0, my money is naka-dual screen ako. So, Y1 lang focus tayo, ha, not the Y2. 1,000. So, at 0 0.5, kunyari, my money is 1,005. Okay? 0 0.5 time, no? At 0 0.7, so 1,000. At 0 0.7. Yan. So, ganyan yung progress ng money. Pero pag pumunta na ako ng 1, 1,010 ang pera ko. Pero pag pumunta ako ng 2 years, 1,020.1. Okay? Yung Y2 ko dito, guys, uh, itong Y1, yan yung simple interest. Yung Y2, yan yung compound interest. Tignan nyo, at one year, pareho sila. No? At one year. Tapos, pag nag-three years ako, mas maganda na mag-perform ang Y2, which is the compound interest, versus the Y1. Yung Y1, mababa na, no? Pero at Y1, equal sila. Kasi totoo yan, no? At one year, totoo nga naman na the performance, almost the same. Kasi nag-intersect sila doon. Okay? Pero, yun nga, mas maganda pa rin after one year ang performance. So, hindi ko na napakita dyan. Tapos, suppose, so, yun, no? Yun yung magandang na-establish ko ngayong araw na to. And then this one, <clears throat> this is the formula of the compound interest. You can have also an explore, exploration of this using the calculator. So, I'll just write it here. The P here, 1 plus R over N and T. Kasi itong compound interest at a certain period. Compounded quarterly, compounded annually, compounded monthly. What about compounded continuously? Yung nabaon ka na sa utang, parang loan. Or Manila teachers, kunyari, ganyan, alone na tayo. So, how are you going to derive a formula for this? So, the accumulated value or the A. So, P. 1 plus, I can rewrite this as 1 over N over R. Tama ba ko? Pwede yung mangyari n over r n t yeah gusto ko mapakita niyo to sa class no p 1 plus 1 over n over r tapos lagay mo dito uh, raised to n over r pero put ano uh, pwede mo siyang gawing r t yan yeah. and then let x ka let x be n over r. So that my accumulated value, I'm just manipulating the compound interest formula class. So p, it can be 1 plus, so since I let this as n over r, so 1 over x raised to x, then raised to t. And then, 
If you notice, I want to explore the behavior of this. The 1 plus 1 over x raised to x, okay? Using the graphics calculator. So, if I, I delete this one, ha? okay, na tayo dyan, na-establish ko na yung konsepto. I want to explore the 1 plus 1 over x. Okay. Raise to, ano pa pala to? To x. Raise to x. Yan. So, dapat malagay ko to raise to x. Yan. Okay, then the table. So, you know, you will notice here at 2... As the value of x increases, so kunyari at 10, so 10, the y value is 2.5. Uh, at 100, the value of the function 2.7048. I'll move up to 1,000. So we still have 15 minutes, no? Bago mag-12, sige. Ibilisan ko na, 1,000, uh, or zeros. So notice what is that value we are approaching. That is actually as x becomes bigger and bigger, you are approaching this one, the, the 2.718. That's why establish to your class that this is approaching 2.718, which is equivalent to letter E. And then you can say or conclude to your class that the accumulated value can be expressed as P. This one is the E. Then, nawala yung R ko dito kanina. So, RT. Yan. So, at least the established ko mo as a teacher, that's behind, the, that, that's the reason behind why is that from compound interest compounded continuously, the formula will become the PERT, the P times the E raised to RT, which is the 2.718. Okay? And then you can have that in your calculator, actually. So the first problem here, this one. So, pwede mo yung puntahan sa calculator using the time value yeah, the TVM, the time value money. In the time value money, my simple interest, compound interest, cash flow, all things about financial math, uh, annuity, de uh, deferred annuity, lahat yon, ordinary annuity. So if we have enough time, we will explore this. So you can solve the problem that we have here a while ago using the F1 and the F2. F1 is for simple interest. F2 is for compound interest. So at least the meron tayo dyan. Then I want to move on. Dito na ako magtatapos sa statistics. So kailangan ma-explore din natin ang stat. In this descriptive stat, let's say these are the data in algebra test for grade A. And then you want to say something about the numbers. Diba nga sabi nila sa, sa numbers, uh, may kwento sa kwenta. So in descriptive statistics, you just describe the numbers, what is happening in the numbers, or sabi nga ng cliche na a picture speaks louder than words. Diba? So dapat mabigyan mo to ng picture. So we will have some pictures of these numbers. So go to your stat menu. Okay, so I'll move to a stat. Ito napaka-boring ng stat. Pero but, but because of this, uh, pwede mo mapaganda, mapabilis. Kasi sa stat, diba, ang dami mong tinatali, tas ang dami mong kinain na oras at board. So you can have this. So ang ginawa ko dito, in-enter ko na yung table 1, list 1 yon, Yung table 2, list 2. Table 3, list 3. Ito yung grade ng grade 8 sa mathematics. no? So go back ako sa data ko. Yan. Group A, list 1. 
Group 2, less 2. Group 3, yan yung less 3. 40 dalawang beses with their frequencies. Okay? Ang gagawin ko, I'll just show to you how, are, how I'm going to produce a picture out of this data na in-enter ko dito sa parang Excel file no calculator. So, group, graph. Okay, then set. Sa unang graph, <clears throat> I, I'll use the the stat graph one, histogram. Okay. Pero ang less ko sa unang graph ay less one. Gagamitin ko yung data na nasa column one, less one. Okay. And then, exit. Exit. Then, igagraph ko siya, no? Graph 1. X, Z. Yan yung graph ng unang data. Okay? Pero pag nilagay ko ang 1 minus bar dyan, makikita mo na ang mean. Okay? Lahat ng data, summation of X, the standard deviation, the 5-point summary number, which is very important to me, yung... Minimum value, quartal 1, the, the median, which is the quartal 2, quartal 3, lahat yan. Okay? Napakahalaga yan. So, go back ako. Igagrab ko siya. Excel. And then, copy ko lang siya. Para mapakita ko later. So, copy. This is grab 1. Ano wala? So, ito yung unang data. So, yan ang unang data. Then, ikalawa, I'll just change. Madali na lang naman siya, no? I'll just change this to graph 2. Pero isiset ko na this time, list to siya. List number 2. Okay, yan. And then, exe, graph 2. Exe, execute. So, this is the sa uh, the the graph of the second table para mapa ma compare mo sa bata no yan so kunyari online teaching na and you have to show this ng mabilisan so ganito lang ang gagawin mo you will create histogram for each table then later give some interpretation and then sa graph 3 is set ko na naman ang graph 3 ko as List 3, so graph, and then graph ko siya, graph 3, exit. This is my second graph, capture, I'm uh, my third graph rather. So yan, tapos ito yung gusto kong i-explore ninyo. Okay, yan, kunyari, no? Uh, Mag-annotate ako dito. I'll write some. If you know this class, kunyari, may mga estudyante ka, the graph of the first table, if you trace it, okay, the tail is going to the right. While the second table class, the group B or section B, the tail is going to the left. Okay? And then while... The group, parang namali ako yata sa group C. Anong list ito? This should be the table. So, capture. Parang ba kami? Capture. So, almost the same. Eh. Nagulat ako. Pareho sila. Okay? So, this is the group C. This should be the graph of group C. Dating ko lang. So, let me annotate again, ha. So, this is the group B and then group C. So, notice that the first group, it's skewed to the right. So, it, it, it talks about the, the degree of distortion or this uh, degree of spread, which is the kurtosis. So, dito, 
<clears throat> makikita natin mga, we can interpret that the first group or first section, maraming mababang bata. No? Dito, kasi dito yung 40, dito yung highest score. Eh. Dito na yung highest score, dito yung lowest. The bulk portion falls under the lowest score. Unlike here, ang highest score, ang dami, kaunti ang nasa lowest score. Dito naman, equally spread, no? naka-spread siya. May highest, dito yung average lang. So if I'm going to interpret that the section A, maybe the test is too difficult for grade 8 math, kaya ganito nangyari, yung lowest score, marami. Tapos kakaunti yung mga highest score. Maybe the students hindi nakaprepare ng exam, hindi nakapag-review. Unlike here in the skew to the left, maraming bata ang mas mara ang nakakuha ng mataas na score. Ayan, no? ang taas-taas. Ibig sabihin, nakapag-review ang bata or maybe madali ang exam na ginawa ni teacher kasi maraming nakakuha or hindi siya ganun kaganda yung exam, parang giveaways, mga ganun. Ano? Kaya mas maganda yung normally distributed like this. Na kung saan, Hindi lahat mababa, hindi lahat maba, mata, mataas, average lang siya. So that's one way to interpret using the histogram. Kunyari, ayaw mo naman ng histogram. Pwede rin namang uh, box and whisker plot. Mas maganda ang box and whisker plot. Kasi, iba ang alam natin sa box and whisker plot, kapag ang tail ay mahaba sa kanan, skewed to the right. A positive skewed. Kapag ang tail ay mabab, mahaba sa kaliwa, negatively skewed. Kapag pantay yung whisker nung, kaya nga box and whisker plot, yung, yung pusa yan eh, no? Pag mapareho yung bunto ay whisker nung kaliwa at kana, normally distributed. So let us explore that in the, for our one, two minutes na lang. So ito ay graph. So I'll set my graph for the first is instead of histogram, I'll use the box plot. So, X. Eh? But the, the, the list should be list one. Yun yung igagrap ko yung column one. So, graph one. So, napansin niyo na yung box and whisker plot ko. Mahaba sa kanan, so positively skewed ang section A. Ibig sabihin, pag tinrace ko to, shift, trace, yan yung minimum value, 40, quartal 1 ko, 50, quartal 3 ko, 70, 100. So, mas marami yung mabab matataas, ah, mabababa kaysa sa mababa matataas. Samantalang yung aking graph 2, Si set ko muna siya. Grab to ko. Box and whisker plot. Pero list 2 naman ang gagamitin ko. Column 2. Then let's see. Grab 2. Yan siya ano. Napili ko pala ay hindi. Box and whisker plot. Sa list 2. Tama naman no. Box and whisker plot. Graph. X, eh. Oh, okay. Anyway. So, gusto ko mapakita dito na... Bakit gano'n? Anyway. So, yun nga, no? Yung box and whisker plot, one way to show the data in a picture. So, that's the use of this. Uh, menu in the graphics calculator this stat. Actually, uh, meron pa sana ako inferential stat, pero sa inferential kasi, kunyari, although nakalagay naman na dito, pero last na lang ito ha, hypothesis testing. Kunyari, these are the data, the claim of the principal, average, uh, above the average intelligence. So, kung ang mu ko, ang, the seven step procedure kasi sa stat is mu, Sabi niya, 170. That's the normal. 
that's, that's the status quo. Pero ang claim ni principal, the new, uh, greater than sa 170 daw. Okay? Kasi above. Above. Okay? But we don't have here, oh, alpha level ko dito ay 0 0.05. Okay? We have here 25. So our N is 25. We don't have the, the standard deviation, the X bar, and then we will compute it using the calculator. But we assume that the data, it is normally distributed. So in this case, the, the standard deviation of the sample is unknown. I'm going to use the t-test. Okay? So the t-test, X minus mu, S over the square root of N. So I'm going to use that. Pero, but with the use of the calculator, you just plug in. So t test, I'll use the T, then one sample, but yan na, naka-plug in na, no? Greater than kasi yung list ko ay list 4. Yan. Ibig sabihin yung data 4. Kasi Inano ko na eh, no? In-enter ko na dito yung data na nakita nyo kanina sa aking problem. Okay? Then, X, Then, T-test. T, one sample. Greater than yung ginamit ko kanina kasi above. That's the claim of the principal, above. Okay? And then, list for then execute, I think. So, we have to execute now. Execute. This is the T. So, ibig sabihin, if I'm going to compute this, the X bar is there, the, uh, the, sum, the standard deviation is there, the T value is already written there in the graphing calculator. So, it means that my T here, it's uh, 1.22. Then, meron na ako 10.30 something, 32. X bar is given already. But for me, I have to decide now kung ano ba talaga, accept HO or reject HO. So execute, draw. So that's one thing I like here. Masasabi niya na yan yung key value mo or pwede mo yung P value approach. Okay? So the T value approach. So I'll, I'll capture this. Capture ko. Capture the screen. And then it's here. Sorry. Ah, what made you not capture? Sorry. So it's here pala. Copy. Yan. Diba alam natin sa stat na kapag ang P, ang 0.05, if the p value which is 0 0.0 ano if the p value is less than the, the alpha level reject ho reject the now but in this case 0 .0, a 0 0.116 is greater than 0 0.05 so therefore accept accept the the null hypothesis. So it means that the claim of the principal, there is no enough evidence or sufficient evidence to conclude that the average uh, IQ of the students in his school is above the average no, status quo. Okay? It means that uh, we will not reject the HO. So, kasi based on the p-value test, mas mababa, mas mataas ang p-value sa alpha level or you can also use the the critical value the critical value of the t test at two uh, one tail 1.171 if i'm not mistaken so this is the rejection region it so happened that the value 1.22 sorry the 1.22 here found here inside so, which is the acceptance region. So, talaga, accept HO. Kahit anong gawin mong approach, P-value or the traditional approach. Okay? 
So therefore, accept each of the, the principal, the claim of the principal, there's no enough evidence to conclude that the average uh, IQ of the student is above the status quo. Okay, so I think that concludes my talk uh, regarding the, the use of this graphing calculator. So thank you so much. At least na na, na bit ko yung 12. Uh, I know gutom na lahat. Okay. Okay, thank you, Sir my Sir Lee, for that very uh, informative talk about the use of Casio calculators across uh, different topics in mathematics. So talagang ano to, no? hindi lang nakapokus sa isang subject, but nakapokus talaga siya sa isang topic pala. So talagang, kasi honestly ako, I'm a math teacher, elementary math teacher. Nung nag-aaral pa ako nung high school, <laughs> medyo ayan din ang aking, medyo nahirapan din talaga ako dyan sa subject na yan. Good thing ngayon, meron na tayo yung ginagamit ng mga applications na masapapadali at lagi nang inuulit sa atin ni Sir Lee kanina na so sa teacher, magtuturo ng ganitong bagay, hindi dapat dumiretso dun sa technology integration kagad yung paggamit ng calculator. Dapat may pakita muna ng teacher kung paano ba siya gawin ng mano-mano. So ayan po. So, Sir Lee, basa lang po tayo ng ating mga comments dito po sa ating, sa ating pong mga Facebook user. So, hanap lang tayo ng comment. Kasi, honestly, Sir, karamihan uh -huh. ng nababasa ko, ito lang lagi sinasabi nila. Ayan. Yeah. Ang galing-galing mo, Sir. So, ayan po. Wala ako nakikita ang comment dito, Sir. Lahat ay puro mga words of appreciation kasi talagang ako, honestly, Natuwa ako na sa discussion kasi talagang parang si sir ay nasa classroom na meron siyang sinusulatan na parang blackboard type na, na material. Kaya yung iba, medyo nakasabay din sila at naging enjoy nila yung ating discussion po ngayon. So sir, babalik po ako sa inyo later on and uh, standby lang po muna tayo sir at tingnan natin ang ating susunod na part ng ating program. So at this point, um, magkakaroon tayo ng ating ng ating raffle. Uh, but before that, let us call on our Casio Education Unit Head, Mr. Joel Serrano, for his message. Hello. Uh, Hello. Good morning, sir, buddy. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. No, um, I would like to say thank you first to DepEd ETU for your continued support for a quality mathematics education in our country. No, uh, thank you also to Sir Mark Anthony C, ang pambansang teacher trainer ng Pilipinas, and of course to Sir Buddy, ang official pambansang webcaster ng Pilipinas naman. No, and and of course. Last but not the least to Sir Michael Lee for his very nice presentation today. It was a really nice presentation and discussion na talagang parang ito yung uh, magandang example for an online discussion. No? Uh, and if you will ask me why we are doing this uh, session for today, we, we uh, used the Casio FX9860G 2SD graphing calculator. Um, if you have listened to Mr. Lee kanina, ang sabi niya, he mentioned na may mga na-provide kasi na calculator ang DepEd na Casio Graphics Calculator. Uh, yun nga lang sa mga selected uh, high schools. And of course, kami sa Casio Education, it is our mission to provide trainings sa mga teachers na recipient ng uh, recipient, recipient schools. And para magamit natin sa mga online learning, no? And we would like to take this opportunity to invite yung mga divisions office, yung mga regional offices, na if you will be interested to, to this kind of webinar training, um, you, may, you may invite us, no? And please message us through our official Facebook page, uh, Casio Calculators Philippines, and we will be happy to respond to, to, to it accordingly. Um, yun, so uh, abangan nyo po yung mga aming upcoming webinars together with the ETU in the coming days. And we will try to make it more exciting. Uh, 
tsaka more education pa para sa lahat, no? And uh, again, maraming salamat sa Deputy ETU and to everybody na nanood ngayon. And let's try to continue to promote quality mathematics classroom education in our country. Maraming pong salamat. Sir Buddy, thank you. Okay, thank you Sir Joel. So talagang uh, ever since kaso ay laging nalariyan at talagang maganda yung sinabi ng Sir Joel. No? May mga school tayo na recipient ng mga calculators natin. So yes. on their part, talagang sabi nila to make is uh, talagang magamit ng mga teachers. Kaso is providing trainings sa ating mga teachers. And right. alam ko may naudlot, naudlot to eh. Alam ko may naudlot na training dapat this summer. Dapat this summer. Yes. Uh, medyo nagkala ng problema, but we are working on that. So, alam ko medyo nasa ano na yan. Mayroon ng pag-uusap dyan. So, let's hope for a positive uh, outcome ng ating pagkakita. So, at this point, invite natin ulit si Sir Michael Lee. And then, magkakaroon tayo ng raffle ng Sir Joel. So, live raffle. So, kung papasunin po ninyo kanina during, uh, during our... During our uh, webinar, nilabas namin yung link ng attendance. And then, sa attendance na yun, um, yung mga umabot sa 11 a.m. na cut-off, sila yung makakasama sa raffle. So, as of, uh, as of this time, ang nagsumagot ng, uh, ng 11 a.m. ay 434. And this is the... This is the Excel type of this. This is the Excel file of that 134. Ay, ay 434. Ayan po. Ayan po ang ating 434 na mga participants na sumagot. And to have our Apple, we will be using this open source application called The Hat. Ito yung tinuturo namin sa EdTech. So, kapansin ninyo, meron tayo rito from number 1 hanggang 434 kasi ito yung mga number of participants natin. So I think so let's let's uh, let's start the raffle. Uh, unahin nating magbanggit ng mga winners si Sir Michael. So Our first winner <laughs> So our first winner, Sir Michael, parin po ng ating first winner. Sir Buddy, mali. Mali. Ayaw, mali. It's... Tingnan lang natin ha. Ito, our winner is... Wow, okay. Our winner is uh, Donna Lomboy. I don't know what division ito galing si Donna Lomboy. So, our first winner is um, Donna Lomboy. So, i-record natin yan. Our second winner, Sir Joel. Do the honors. Uh, congratulations to Miss Dulce Dayao Brea. Ayan, and our last winner, i-announce ia ng ating guest co-host, our ethics specialist from Makati, <laughs> Ma'am Ruela Andaya Reyes. So, tignan natin, our third winner is... Ayan, tignan lang. Hindi ko makita yung mouse ko, ayan. Ma'am Kaya Ayan Okay Si si Christine PR Baguio Okay so ayan po Ang ating mga winners Our first winner is Ma'am Mata Lomboy Our second winner is Sir Dulce Dayo Abrea And our third winner is Miss Christine R. Baguio. So, intayin natin ang intayin natin na mag-communicate sa inyo ang ating representatives from Casio. Kaya kung papansin niyo po, 
Uh, kasama po sa sinagutan natin sa attendance yung pong ating contact number. So we will get, uh, we will try to contact you. So, and ano ba yung matatanggap nila, Sir Joel? According to Sir Joel, Sir Joel, do the honor, ano po matatanggap ng ating mga... Uh, Casio, special Casio uh, pocket ah. calculator. Okay, so, ayan. ayan. Yan yung matatanggap winners sa ating Casio seminar ngayong araw. So, adi ito lang si Ma'am Wei kasi... Alam mo, Sir Joel and Sir Lee, pagdating kasi sa mga ganito bagay, when it comes to sharing experiences, kasi si Ma'am Boy, meron niyang high school student na nag-aaral sa Pati Science High School. Mga ganito mga takeaway na ito ni Ma'am Ruena. So, tingnan natin, Ma'am Boy, as a mother, paano mo nakikita itong nakakatulong sa iyong anak? Uh, yung anak ko kasi, nag-aaral din sa, sa Baksay. Yan yung una kong binili. Kasi sabi niya, Ma, I need cash calculator. So, syempre, ayan, binili ako siya. So, syempre kasi, as a mother, kung ano yung nakakatulong sa anak mo, talagang ibibigay mo. Hindi naman yung lahat-lahat, pero sa senaryo ng pag-aaral, syempre kailangan talaga magagamit siyang cash calculator, which is the class. class. Yes. Diba? Okay, so, so, ayan, ganda talaga siya gamitin. So, ayan, so, katulad ng... Yes, yes. So, Katulad ayan. ng how they... Sir Lee presented it, talagang makakatulong siya sa mga bata. Yes, yeah, so talagang miski ako, although I'm a math teacher, medyo yung mga higher math kasi minsan na, ang hirap talaga, I'll be honest, talagang ayan din yung, <laughs> dyan ako nahihilapan ng high school, but with the, help of present, with the help of the presentation of our education program supervisor in mathematics sa PSDO Mandaluyo, PSDO Makati, Sir Michael Lee, you know, medyo naging madali at talagang, Pinomonitor ko yung comments eh. From the start up to the last point na nagsasalita si Sir Lee, walang tanong. Ang tanong lang talaga nila, saan i-download yung application? And I think Sir Joel uh, was able to pay some clarifications regarding dun sa link kasi minsan may mga hindi nag ng link. Hindi po ibig sabihin, hindi nyo ma-access yung link. Ibig sabihin, hindi po gumagana. Ilang beses na po nag-webinar ang ETU, meron kami mga link na sinishare na hindi po mapasok because ang dami po pumapasok doon sa site na yon So, medyo nagkakaroon ng traffic. So, ayan sir, uh, any last words from our speaker, Sir Lee? Uh, ayun nga. So, I hope that the technology cannot replace our teachers. Uh, gusto ko sana lagi emphasize na if you teach technology, wag mag-start sa technology start ka lagi sa primitive kung ano yung natutunan mo and how are you going to solve it on the board. Basta I believe na technology cannot be replaced by the teachers. and But in the hands of the great teachers, your technology can be transformational. So I hope na medyo na-accept na ng mga senior or mga veteran teacher natin yung new normal. Kasi yes. alam niyo na pag ganito mga technology, yung mga veteran teacher natin ang number one hesitant sa pag-embrace, no? Yun lang. So, ayan. Now, let's have Sir Joel Serrano uh, on um, the side of the show, Philippines. Actually, wala na ako masabi. <laughs> Ang ganda ng performance ni Mr. Lee, eh. Di ba? Kung baga, mahirap ng... Mahirap <laughs> <at all. laughs> anyway, sa mga listeners and nanonood kanina, uh, if you need our assistance, if you need our help, Handa kami tumulong sa si Casio. Walang problema. Kontakin nyo lang kami. Maraming salamat ulit. So, ayan. Again, Sir Michael Lee and Sir Joel Serrano, thank you for this very informative and worthwhile activity na Ms. Kisabado na nagkaroon tayo ng ganitong klase ng, ng webinar. Di ba sabi nga nila, yung pagkatuto kasi hindi yan natatapos. Habang tayo ay nabubuhay, Uh, it's, it's a lifelong process na talagang sa bawat gagawin natin, sa bawat araw, sa bawat oras, tayo ay matututo. Again, thank you Sir Lee and Sir Joel Serrano. Salamat po. Salamat, salamat. Salamat thank po sa inyo. Ayan, so Ma'am Weng, grabe, no? Kahapon na nandito ka, ngayon nandiyan ka na sa bahay niyo. <laughs> of course. Kaya yeah, so, sabad mo kayo. Diba? So, family day naman. Yes. So, may ano lang natin. Oh, kasi baka sabihin nila ano ba nangyari sa ETU? Bakit hindi nakapag-webinar? 
honestly, we have we have our plan of activities for the month of July before pa man. So talagang yung week na nagdaan, talagang walang schedule of webinar because nag-focus naman tayo sa production ng uh, instructional video na ilalabas sa DepEd TV. So ibig sabihin, nag-focus tayo sa pag-shoot ng mga ilalabas natin sa DepEd TV on August 24. Tama ba, Mamuel? Yes, tama. And today, nagkaroon ng training ang ating mga ang ating 21 teacher TV broadcaster with uh, ang ating uh, special trainer which is uh, si Sir Paolo Bidiones. Uh, so, ang dami niyang oh, yeah. inputs, ang dami niyang takeaway. So ayun po ang ina-expect ng ating mga participants no na uh, yung ginagawa natin hindi na sa sayang but so ayun, basta ang dami. Masyado ako na overwhelmed kasi new learning, new challenge. So maganda talaga yung project. So ayun, yun yung pakakaabangan ng mga ating mga learners. So well equipped ang teacher, more training, hindi lang basta training, talagang training talagang masasabi ko. At kahit ako, madami ako natutunan kanina. Diba? Oh, kasi, kasi sa Monday, no? Sa Monday, tayong tatlo nila Sir Ariel ang sasalang naman for that taping ng ating module in math in edukasyon sa pagkapakatao or arts and Sir Ariel or PE. Talagang kahapon dun sa training natin kay Mr. Paolo Vidiones, talagang ibang-iba pala talaga pagkaharap pag nasa TV ka na. So ngayon, alam ko may namimiss kayo, may hinahanap kayo sa ating webinar. Naisip namin yan. So let's watch this video of our head in the Educational Technology Unit, Sir Mark Anthony C.C. para sa kanyang closing message. Pabalik pa kami, hindi pa tapos. So good morning to all of our participants in the webinar session regarding the utilization of this uh, uh, mathematical equipment, lalo yung ating calculator. So, I highly encourage each one of you to love and enjoy math. At sa mga susunod na araw ay makikita nyo na rin po sa ating mga television ang pagtuturo ng mga guro gamit ang mga equipment na ito. At hindi lamang yun, magiging live na po ang ating DepEd TV channel anytime soon. At sana po sa lahat ng inyong matutunan ay magamit nyo ito ng maayos at mabuti para sa new normal classroom na ating binabanggit lagi. So, let's home our craft. Asensya na po dahil ako ay nasa labas, mahina ang aking internet connection. Uh, dahil sa bahay po ako. So, sa ating po mga manonood, rest assured that the Educational Technology Unit in coordination with our partners and stakeholders, we will work hand in hand to support the learning continuity plan of the Department of Education. Kaya mabuhay po tayong lahat. So, let's just be patient at patuloy natin enhance ang ating mga skills. Maraming 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 salamat po sa inyo po mga suporta. God bless us all. Bye-bye. Ayan. So, Ma'am Weng, no? sinabi na mismo straight ni Sir Mark na talagang abangan pa natin ang mga darating pang sessions ng, uh, uh, ng EdTech Unit with Casio and I think it will be every Saturday pa rin kasi Nagkibigyan natin sila ng idea no, sa ating TV, Dep and TV. Monday to Friday, ang magiging Dep and TV natin ay more of instructional. So may mga teacher broadcaster na magtuturo sa ating mga learners using TV as a medium of the delivery of instruction. Ngayon, hindi lang puro learners. Meron tayong Saturday na time slot na intended naman siya for professional development for teachers. So ayan, sabi nga di ba, yung sabi ni Sir Mark kanina, gagamitin natin yung mga equipments, yung mga materials na meron tayo. So intayin natin kasi marami pa tayong gagawin at marami pang pasabog na dapat hintayin ang ating mga participants. Mabuena. Yes, intay-intay lang tayo kung feeling natin, nasa na, nasa na, to cease to believe, just wait. Siyempre, hindi sila kaharap ng hindi sila equipped, na hindi sila fully trained. So, standby lang kayo kasi talagang maraming ginagawang training. Ayan. At ang mga trainer ng ating TV, teacher, TV broadcaster, mga bigatin. Kung ano yung nakikita niya sa mga, yung mga tipong nagbabalita, isa yon like, 
Sabihin ko na ba, Sir Bunch? Sige, magbili ka lang siya. Uchi Cruz Valdez, Karen Dabela, King Pachenza, and yung mga yan. And Sir Pauli Bidiones. Marami pa. At yung iba pang baka kasi may iba nagtatanong na hala, ano yun? Nag-audition kami tapos 21 lang ang pinili. Nakalagay po sa memorandum, this is just batch, batch one. one. So let's expect na meron pang mga paparating na batch sa ating mga teacher broadcaster and we cannot uh, say na na, kailang, na pwede pa silang magpasa kasi I know kanina, kaninang 12 midnight, natapos na po yung submission kasi meron tayong deadlines. Bakit ba kailangan mag-set ng deadlines for that? Kasi sinasala po yan. Sinasala po yung mga teacher broadcaster natin. Ayan. I know may mga division offices din po na nag-conduct lang kanilang screening. We also have so marami. So uh, talagang tulong-tulong dapat tayo dito sa ating ginagawa ngayon sa kagawaran. So it's 12.24. I know gusto gusto ko nilang kumain. So hindi na natin papatagalin to. Lunch time na. So Ma'am yeah. Weng, maraming 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 salamat for joining me sa ating webinar session ngayong araw. Ayan. Thank you so much sa sa aming EPS, sa aming supervisor ng SDO Mahati. Thank you so much kay Sir Lee. Nako, napaka talagang sobrang na-overwhelm na ako kasi siya ang speaker. Kahapon ko lang po nalaman. So I, I'm so thankful kasi talagang idol ko yan. So ang galing yan talaga. Yeah. So, sobrang so, galing ba? Walang. So, anong... Proud kami sa SDO Mahati kasi siya ang aming supervisor. So sure. ano yan, walk the talk yan. Kaya yung mga teacher niyan, hindi sabi na hindi ako makakagawa. Eh si sir nga gumagawa eh, di ba? So oh, set yeah. the yeah. oh, oh. Thank you so much, Sir Lee and Sir Joel. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Weng. So ayan, isa na namang makabuluhang Sabado ang nagdaan. At I know maraming 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 na naman kayong natutunan sa ating webinar ngayong araw na ito. Alam natin na itong bang bagay na nararanasan natin ngayon, ito ay bago sa atin. Hindi tayo sanay sa mga gantong bagay dahil lulang sinasabi ko nga, ang pinaghahandaan naman natin is alam natin kung paano mag-deal with typhoons, earthquakes, and other calamities. Pero itong pandemic na it's almost four months, mag-four months na natin nararanasan, but still, ganun pa rin. So we need to adopt kailangan maging flexible tayo sa situations kasi sabi nga nila kailangan natin sumabay sa Agos and kasi pag hindi tayo sumabay tayo rin ako pag iiwanan. Lagi sinasabi ng ating butihing kalihim ng kagawaran ng edukasyon, ang ating kagalang-galang na Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones, education must continue, ano man ang mangyari, hindi, hindi natin papayagan na titigil ang edukasyon. Meron tayong mga health safety protocols na sinusunod sa bawat paaralan. And recently, nagkaroon ng announcements na iaalaw ang minimal face-to-face -face na sa mga wala talagang cases. Huwag po tayong mag-alala kasi hindi po tayo hahayaan ng pamahalaan at ng kagawaran ng edukasyon na magkaroon ng problema sa pagubukas ng klase. Maraming learning modalities na kailangan nating gamitin na pwede nating i-apply Meron tayong tinatawag na modular based learning, meron tayong online learning and meron din tayong blended approach and etong ginagawa natin we have a TV and radio based instruction. It is not a one size fits all na puro online na puro modular, depende kung ano ang pangangailangan, kung ano ang applicable. Dahil bago pa man mag-August, bago pa man ang July, nagconduct tayo ng survey na sinagutan ng ating mga stakeholders at yun yung naging tinignan yun as basis on how to craft our learning modalities. So again, wala na tayong magagawa na nandito na si COVID. Kailangan natin tanggapin ang realidad na nandito na siya sa atin at parte na siya ng buhay natin. Ngayon, malapit ng August 24, ang kagawaran ay ginagawa ang lahat para maihanda tayo, tayo mga guru, ang ating mga mag-aaral sa pagbukas ng klase. Lagi natin natandaan, hindi kakayarin ang kagawaran ng edukasyon. Nagapanin lahat ng mga bagay na ito. It's a collective effort. Lahat ng guro sa buong Pilipinas, sama-sama, tulong-tulong tayo. Dahil alam naman natin, iisa lang ang minimithi ng ating kagawaran. 
Ito ay ang pagsusulong ng edukalidad para sa lahat ng mga batang na mga mag-aaral natin sa Bansang Pilipinas. Again, my name is Mr. Salvador E. Malansala de Purser, Educational Technology Specialist. Mag-ingat po tayong lahat and God bless us all.